Right now, hand traps are some of the most important cards in the game. And because players are always evolving, I don't want you to miss out on some important changes that could affect the outcome of the game or be blindsided by a new and popular card that can be really, really powerful against some of the best decks, including yours. So in today's tier list, I have gathered the most popular hand traps to rank them all the way down to Gopia. Not every hand trap is ranked the same, but this guide is going to be incredibly important for you to be able to win games. Let's jump on in. Bang! Big dog, the criteria for this tier list is simple. We'll be ranking these hand traps on not only how powerful they are, but their coverage. It's really, really important that we rank these strategies on their coverage. And the reason why is because you still don't want to zero in on one particular strategy because you get clapped by that strategy's counters, which a lot of people are playing. And so off the top, the most commonly played Yu-Gi-Oh decks are Snake Eyes, Cash Tira, Flew Under Reese, Voiceless Voice, and Branded. I think that it's really important to consider these particular decks because while we are going through changes, it's not going to stray too much because players are still going to be using these decks. Another thing that I want to mention is that if you guys want to see a different particular tier list, go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. I really want to do some other type of tier list and I'm going to need your help on giving me some ideas. Let's go ahead and start off with Ally of Justice Cycle Reader. This card is actually pretty cracked against Voiceless Voice because not only can it banish low, it can also potentially banish Skull Guardian 2 when your opponent uses Dino Munda. But unless Drytron makes a comeback right now, this card is copia. Now, fortunately, Drytron will make a comeback in about seven months from now. But for right now, this card is only good against Voiceless Voice, and there are better options. Ghost Moaner in Moonlit Chill has solidified itself as a must-play Yu-Gi-Oh card. This card is insane. Not only does it provide another effect negation into the meta, it also comes up in time. I've had multiple situations where you use this card, and now your opponent's in a really tough spot. If they get rid of that card, or if you're able to get rid of that card, you can inflict some burn damage and potentially win the game. This is also the only hand trap that can negate a monster effect and does not care what phase it is or what card you have on the field. So use this card wisely. Mourner's coverage is pretty much insane too, outside of Fluunderis, but a card that doesn't have a lot of coverage are the Bestial monsters. They can only hit light and dark decks. I will say it does have way more coverage than Ally of Justice Psycho Reader, because now the Bestial monsters can hit stuff like the gimmick puppet lock, something you don't want to see in Branded, and it can also stop low from being special summoned, which is the better of the two. I think the Bestials are side worthy. The Bestial monsters are exactly where I think Konami has envisioned them. Really, really powerful against some decks, but not incredible against every single thing. If you are playing a light and dark deck that can use the Bestials, it is not a bad idea to main them because even using them against cards like Link Kribo in the fire matchup is crazy good. Dami Mami. All right, Sorto Iris, Dama Mama. You are going to be surprised where I put this card. Big dogs, you know that I'm a simp for Dama Mama, but I actually have a reason to put it into Sleeper. Effect negation is at an all time high. It is more important now than ever. And as you already know, Sword Soul Iris can summon herself when that happens. So at worst, a lot of times she can serve herself as a chump blocker, or she could even provide an additional source of damage when you're trying to swing for game. But one of the cool things about this card is that if your opponent special summons from the deck, you get to draw two cards. And there's quite a few decks that summon from the deck. On top of that, it can check extra deck monsters and summon monsters from your hand. I think Sword Soul Iris definitely has a spot in the correct Yu-Gi-Oh strategies, which means it's on the sleeper side. I'm not saying play this card in every single Yu-Gi-Oh deck, I'm saying in the correct situations, this card can come out and apply some genuine pressure. It is up to you to figure out the correct situation though. DD Crow. You know, DD Crow is technically better than Ally of Justice Psycho Reader. It only hits one card, but in this format, you only need to hit one card. And the best thing about it is that it can hit any card, not just monsters. This card is one of the most surgible hand traps thanks to cards like Crow's Cowery. And I have to say that this is a sideboard worthy card. If your deck cannot afford to play the Bestials and you still wanna be able to have an answer to decks like Voiceless Voice, consider playing this card inside of your sideboard. It's pretty solid. And now moving on to the boy, Seravis the Ancient and Ascendant. Now I do wanna talk about Seravis the Ancient and Ascendant, but I think it's gonna be better if I talk about it towards the end of the video. Go ahead and make sure you stay tuned because this card is actually crazy good. Let's move on to Dimension Shifter. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in must play, but 
I don't think Dimension Shifter is that good. The reason why is because three of the five decks that I mentioned can play around Dimension Shifter and even Fire decks. They're starting to play the Field Spell, the Snake Eyes Field Spell, which helps them a ton against playing around this card. I'm not telling you not to play Dimension Shifter. It's a card that wins where it wins. I'm just giving you caution to this card as soon enough, I think it won't be in the must play category. Ironically, in my Cash Tier deck profile that I got 11th place with, I made the conscious decision not to play Dimension Shifter and it never came up. It's kind of crazy, but when you're seeing Monadium, Fluunderese, Cash Tier, and Smart Snake Eyes players, it doesn't do enough. Effect Veiler is one of those solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It is an effect negation card, which almost puts it in must play. The only drawback is that it can only be used during the main phase. And a lot of times decks like Snake Eyes or Voiceless Voice, they can kind of play on your turn too. I would say that Fantastical Dragon Phantasme is one of the best sideboard cards available. And the reason why is because even at the very minimum, SP Little Knight becomes a useless card when this card hits the field. It also cycles your hand and provides a body to your side of the field. It's a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Cypher and Gear Gamma is, oh, oh, I'm gonna actually put this alongside of the Delta. I'm gonna say both of these are sleeper picks. I think that these are sleeper picks trending in the opposite direction. A lot of players think that they're really good, but in actuality, they don't just seem to do enough. They're also fairly restrictive, requiring you I'll not have any monsters on the field. But I'm telling you, once Sideframe Gear Gamma comes to three, we cooking, boys. You better believe it. Until then, I'm playing three driver and one gamma. That's the ultimate combo. They'll never see it coming. We drew the one of when it was the other way around all the time. So in theory, you'll draw the other one of all the time. Right? No, 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 no. Dark Hole Dragon. Dark Hole Dragon is another one of those interesting cards where you guys would think it is copia, but I think it's in the same situation as Sword Soul Iris. The biggest reason is that it can't be destroyed by card effects. That's huge when you're dealing with cards like Promethean Princess, but also it searches Dark Hole from your deck to your hand, and board wipes are pretty good right now. Dark Hole Dragon is one of those cards that is good in the correct situation. Maybe a particular Yu-Gi-Oh strategy that's built on destroying cards, but also when you go against decks, that are really good at destroying themselves. So you can trigger it no matter what. Contact C. This card is really good at giving your opponent an SP Little Knight. Bro, why would you summon this card to your opponent's side of the field unless they're poor? It will be sent to the graveyard for Snake Eyes effects. It will be fused off against branded players and everybody else will probably just make an SP Little Knight. But, 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 if you wanna take advantage of your friend or opponent not having one, this is one of those funny cards that does that. Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. Oh yeah, you guys said that the Dogwood is bad. I'm saying the Dogwood is side worthy. The only thing that I have to say about you Dogwood players, please stop making me look bad. I have been hearing a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh players shotgunning the effect of Dogwood. Bro, if they don't special summon you half your life points. The literal opposite of winning here, guys. Please, please, this card can be a game winning card, but use it correctly. Ghost Bell in Haunted Mansion was once a sideboard worthy Yu-Gi-Oh card, but I think we have to bring it up to solid choice. There are way too many situations where this card is just incredible. And ironically, it hits every single one of the matchups across the board in some way, shape or form. It's a really good hand trap. Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. Okay, so for the reason why Cash Tier Unicorn is good, Dogwood could be good. You can hit your opponent's Link Kribos and Promethean Princesses. The problem with this, is that it, it It doesn't do enough. Unicorn is a searchable, summonable monster that has more effects and has that on top. Reaper requires you to open it and then your opponent goes first and pops off. To be honest, if IP Masquerina only had one target, I think that this card could be good, but I think it's up to you to be able to unlock the sleeper potential of this card. No material. Yeah, no, 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 no. Unfortunately, there's just too many ways around this card's restriction. And its restrictions itself is kind of like not worth it. You gotta have no cards, you gotta be losing or going second. So you lose it. Infinite Impermanence still remains as the must play best hand trap de facto. This card is great because not only does it play around triple tactics talent, you can use it on your turn is your sixth card to be able to negate a card. Now, Heavenly Zephyr Miradora is... Mm. First of all, this card's effect can't be negated. It summons itself and it can negate a card on the field. Bro, 
I actually think that this is not a terrible Yu-Gi-Oh card. Sleeper pick, maybe. It is surgible through card effects like Tempest and Bestial Magnum, and not only provides a body on board to potentially defend you, also can negate a monster on the field. It stops Promethean Princess. The fact that your opponent can't even respond to it with cards like Throne the Floor is kind of crazy. I think that this card in the correct spot can actually be a decent Yu-Gi-Oh card. Nibiru to Primal Being is probably the second, if not the first most powerful hand trap. It's not because it's good against certain particular matchups. It's because it's just so impactful that you have to play it. Nibiru is one of the only hand traps that breaks the rules because all of the other decks they're good against it, but it's just so crazy in certain situations, you gotta play it. I remember when people were saying, it's a droll format. <laughs> Bucko. Droll and Lockbird is still good against decks like Monadia, but every single other one of the top decks has a way to play around it or just skirts the card. Now, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is a must-play Yu-Gi-Oh card. I would have to say it's somewhere right here. The reason why is because I think it's impactful in every matchup in the beginning stages. In the later stages, not as good, and then there's another caveat. If your deck is weak to Promethean Princess, don't play this card. They will literally make Hita and then cook you, my boy. Promethean Princess 100% changes the complexion of this particular card. But if your deck is not weak than the Princess, then it's definitely a card that you keep in all three games. Retaliating C. Now this card seems really good in theory because it's a macro cosmos until you realize that cards like SP, Little Knight, and Flame Beerge exist. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in Kopi. Against all of the other matchups, this card is just a minor inconvenience until they can get it off the field. The problem with this is that it's like, hey, it's a broke people chat. Can you afford SP, Little Knight, my boy? Really weird how Yu-Gi-Oh! is like that right now. Artifact Lancia prevents your opponent from banishing cards. It can only stop your opponent from banishing cards on their turn too, so definitely major Kopia. Fun fact, I was today years old when I realized this is a blue artifact Lancia guy holding the Lancia. I, I didn't know what it was. Now, Ghost Ogre in Snow Rabbit. Holy. Ghost Ogre in Snow Rabbit is good against all modern Yu-Gi-Oh filled spells. It's also good against Cash Tira, Flu, Voiceless Voice, and Snake Eyes, both versions. This card has so many ridiculous applications. I gotta say, Ghost Ogre is a solid choice. I am literally not telling you how good this card is. It stops IP Masquerina and SP Little Knight. It is slowly becoming one of the more impactful cards in the game right now. It's ridiculously good. I genuinely think it's because Yu-Gi-Oh card effects do a lot right now. You have a ton of continuous or field spell and trap cards, and then you have monsters that need to stay on the field to be able to get their effects. Ghost Ogre is the perfect solution, whereas cards like Effect Veiler, Ghost Mourner, and Infinite Impermanence only negate the effect, Ghost Ogre removes the threat completely, which sometimes can be way more useful. Skullmeister is another card that is sneakily good. I will say sideworthy, and the reason why I say sideworthy with this card is because it is not a great solo hand trap. But in a hand trap format where everybody's playing 15, 20, 25, this card is great in conjunction. Getting rid of the Flame Beerge, then stopping its effect. Stopping Promethean Princess's effect. Stopping Voiceless Voice Card's effects in the graveyard. This card has so many good applications and is searchable through Soul Resonator. You think about that right there, buddy. Chaos Hunter. Okay, guys, is it just me? Or does Chaos Hunter looks like Kakashi and Gojo had a baby? And it's a girl, I guess. Chaos Hunter is a stronger Lancia yeah, because it prevents banishing on both turns. That means that your opponent won't be able to shifter you. Unfortunately, the summon requirements require you to discard a card, and in this economy, ain't nobody got time for that. Token Collector can prevent your opponent from summoning Nibiru. Yeah, that that's... That's really all this card can really do. It's... It's... It's just... It ain't it, fam. Vados the Eruption Dragon. <laughs> this card does check filled spells, but also gives your opponent a monster. You know what? I think that it's not terrible. There's going to be a time where this card gets a little bit more powerful, just not right now. Being able to check field spells is actually pretty good, especially seeing that there's a lot in the game. This card is actually pretty crazy against Cash Tier, I ain't gonna lie. But unfortunately, as good as field spells are, I don't think that they have enough agency in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. They're not at the forefront of Yu-Gi-Oh! strategies. When that happens, this card will be a lot better. And lastly, I told you guys we'll talk about Cerevis 
let's talk about it. So Ravis stops Imperm, Effect Veiler, and Ghost Mourner. And if you look at most Yu-Gi-Oh strategies, most of them play all three and three copies up. It also stops SP Little Knight and other pestering target effects like your Snake Eyes Flame Beurge. I think this may be the boldest take alongside of Ghost Ogre, but I think Flame Beurge is a solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh card. With all of the targeting that's happening in the Yu-Gi-Oh format, this card can serve as a way to be able to protect yourself from targeting whether you're going offensive or defensive. It's not a conventional hand trap that actually stops your opponent from doing something and often used proactively to stop your opponent from stopping you from doing something. It's weird enough because it's closer to a board breaker hand trap, meaning that it's not for every single Yu-Gi-Oh deck, but it's actually incredible against every single Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And that's all that I have for the hand trap tier list. My thoughts on what are the best hand traps in the game. Of course, if you wanna see more amazing videos, be sure to check out these as I'll catch you on the next one.